Okay, y'all, we are back in the kitchen today and I've got some great recipes to share with you. We are doing three five ingredient recipes. I've got a crock pot recipe, a sweet treat, and then an easy dinner idea. I cannot wait for all of them. They're gonna be so good. I did a video like this a couple of months ago and you guys asked if I would do more five ingredient recipes. So that is what we're doing today. We're gonna get started on the crock pot recipe so we can go ahead and get that going. So let me flip you around and show you the ingredients. Okay, so y'all know my love of buffalo chicken. I will find any excuse in any way to make it. It is truly one of my favorite things in life. So we are gonna make crock pot buffalo chicken sandwiches. So I have our chicken here, our franks. I know you are thinking like, girl, that is not enough. I know as soon as I get this in the crock pot, I gotta run to the grocery store. So I'm gonna get another bottle. We'll add it in. But franks, blue cheese, some ranch dressing, and then some ranch seasoning. Now, if you don't have like blue cheese crumbles and you wanna just do like blue cheese dressing, you could do a little bit of that and a little ranch or just the blue cheese dressing. Make it how you want. And I do wanna say, I am cheating just a little bit because we're gonna eat these obviously on buns. And Bunky has already told me that he wants a piece of iceberg lettuce on his. So I guess technically that is more than five ingredients, but what is going into the crock pot is only five. <laughs> Okay, so spray in my crock pot and then chicken going in. I'm gonna do about a cap full of this ranch seasoning, which is like one packet. So if you just have the packets of this, just add in the entire thing. Okay, all of the franks that I have left, and like I said, I'll add more in as soon as I get back from the grocery store. I would say you want definitely like a cup at least. Now you can pop a lid on at this point and just let this cook, shred it, and then add like ranch and blue cheese on your sandwich. But I want to add a little bit into the crock pot as well. And then of course, you know, I'll top it with more <laughs> for my sandwich. Um, so I'm just gonna do probably like a quarter cup actually in the crock pot. And then same with my blue cheese. And y'all know I'm like weird <laughs> and love blue cheese. So if you're like me, I feel like the more the better, but if you don't like blue cheese, just don't add that one in. Okay, just kind of give that a little stir around. And we're gonna pop a lid on and let this cook on high for about four hours. Okay, I'm back from the grocery store. I'm gonna add a little bit more Franks to our crock pot, and then we're gonna get started on cheesecake, Oreo, cookies, y'all. Ever since I found this recipe, I have been looking so forward to making them because y'all know I'm like a cookie girl. Yeah. I could care less about other sweets, but I love cookies. You do love a good chocolate chip cookie. And I love Oreo, so it's like perfect match. Yeah. I cannot I wait. love cheesecake and I love Oreos. <laughs> yeah, so. they're going to be so good. Okay, now ingredients for these cookies, and I'm over here dying laughing because I'm like, maybe we should name this video like five, possibly six <laughs> ingredient recipes because I saw two different versions and one of them had um, vanilla extract, which I do want to put in mine. So technically it's six ingredients, but of course you'll need Oreos. You will need um, one stick of softened butter, one block of softened cream cheese, some sugar and some flour. And then like I said, I'm gonna add a little vanilla extract. Okay, so I've got my bowl that we're gonna mix everything in. I'm gonna get my cream cheese and butter in here. I'm telling y'all every time I go to like make cookies or something like this is when I'm like, I really need that KitchenAid mixer. I feel like I missed my chance to get my KitchenAid mixer because I feel like now that the holidays are over, they're not gonna be on sale for like forever. But I'm gonna have my eyes peeled. Thank goodness I just went back and looked at this recipe before I dumped anything else in because I thought it was one block of cream cheese and it's actually only four ounces, which is half a block of cream cheese. So thankfully I can easily half that and get it out. But y'all, these would have been some extra creamy rich cookies had I not just like looked at that. Okay, I double checked all my other measurements. So to this, we're gonna add three fourths of a cup of sugar. And then our one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I got these um, little measuring spoons for Christmas and they're so cute. I will try and link them for y'all down below. Okay, we are whipping this together. So now I'm going to slowly add in one cup of flour and then keep mixing. I 
Okay, I'm gonna let Bunky do the honors of chopping up our Oreos. So we don't want like crumbs because you want them to have like chunks of Oreo in the cookie. Yeah. So kind of like cut them into fours almost. Okay. And the batter, y'all, I can't stop eating it. <laughs> like is, I keep tasting it. Is it, this looks really good. You can taste it. Mm. That's good, isn't it? That's, that's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Now wow. the hard part is gonna be trying not to eat the Oreos. Is there nothing better than just opening up a fresh package of Oreos? I know. How many How many do you think we need? Well, let's check the recipe. I feel like... There's five. It says 10. Let's see how we can... And they don't have to be like perfect, you know? You just want them to be like dust. That's perfection. Do it. Okay, while Bunky finishes cutting these, I'm gonna start adding them in because you just want to like fold these in with a spatula. Guess we gotta replace that one you snagged. Uh huh. Like that almost looks like cookies and cream ice cream. It does. Oh my gosh, Bunky. So these are gonna fluff up into like actual You just have cookies. no idea, yes. And they're gonna be so soft and chewy. Okay, once we get these folded in, I'm actually gonna cover this and we're gonna pop it in the fridge for about 30 minutes and then we'll pull them out and make our cookies. But you wanna refrigerate them until they kind of harden just a little bit. Can I say hi, Desiree? Say hellos. <laughs> She's feeling so much better. She hasn't felt bad since that day, by the way. Yeah, she recovered nicely. She did. She just had a little, you know, little flu, something like that. Oh, she is so sweet. Um, I was thinking, I'm so glad that we are actually going home tonight. Bucky yeah. and I are going back to North Carolina tonight. Uh -huh. And I was like, this is good because we can take the cookies so that we won't eat them all ourselves. Well, we could eat them all in the car. <laughs> we could. It'll be a good snack for the car ride. Yeah, well, that's gonna hold us over. Yeah. Okay, it is time. I think this chicken is done. I wish you could smell our house. Like, it is just buffalo chicken blue cheese goodness. <laughs> okay, let's see how tender. Oh yeah. It is just breaking right apart. Woo, my mouth is watering. I could actually just take this crock pot to the table with this fork, sit here and eat the entire thing by myself. But I should not and I will not. Okay, we're gonna assemble our sandwiches. So for buns, I just got these like ciabatta rolls. You could do like brioche buns, King Hawaiian rolls, hamburger buns, like whatever you want. I just thought these would be really good. I think I'm gonna toast them up just a little bit. Okay, Bunky's gonna cut him some iceberg lettuce. Like I told you, he decided he wanted that on his sandwich. You gotta have some, uh, some a little, crunch. little texture a little in there. Yeah. A little bed of fresh lechuga. I'm gonna taste this chicken. No, I'm gonna have it all on the sandwich, You're my friend. Serious? I got yeah, no, I'm holding out. I want the full experience. Look at that. That is delicious. I'm probably gonna burn my mouth off, but I gotta taste it just like, you know, to see. Quality control. Uh huh. Make sure I'm not gonna be disappointed. Ooh. -wee. Oh. Do you want it? On a sandwich or with chips? Or both? I just want a fork. <laughs> like. Just a bowl. You know what it is? My mouth is watering so bad. Let me tell you what it is. The blue cheese. Yeah. Those little like crumbles that I put in there gave it mm. this like tangy. Creamy. Oh my gosh. Okay. I have to tell you, I made a lot of buffalo chicken dips in my life, okay? <laughs> a lot of them. Yeah. This is like my favorite recipe. This is the best the best we've ever had. When you taste this, you're gonna feel like it's the best one we've ever made. Mouth jets, 
tangy, warm, hot, cheesy. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. How much longer we got on these buns? 10 seconds. Okay. Wowzers, wowzers. I just, I can't, I can't. Okay. You pile as much of this as you want on your sandwich, okay? Ooh. And the more juices you get in there, oh. that can just seep into your bread. Wow. Wow is right. That's looking real good, Oh actually. my gosh. I'm so excited. Now, to the tops of these, we're gonna drizzle just a little bit more ranch. I'm gonna add a few more little blue cheese bites here. Come on, he doesn't want blue cheese, he just wants lettuce. I gotta put some more lettuce on here though. Okay. Lots of crunch. Wow, you're not kidding. Yep. And then and then we're gonna we're gonna top it and then we're gonna flip it. Wow. How about that? Wow. That's the move right there. I love it. Oh boy. Wow, this bun is nice and soft. I think it's because I toasted it. It's a good bun. <laughs> you know, the bread is very important with any sandwich. Very important. Mmm. I can already tell I love it. You are exaggerating. It's the best buffalo chicken I've ever made. I think so. I think it's the blue cheese crumbles that were in there. Wow, that is good. That is delicious, isn't it? Yeah. This is obviously like a really easy weeknight dinner that you can make, but like also I feel like this would be a great like Super Bowl recipe. Everyone can kind of like build and make their own sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Holy smokes. That's tasty. It's so good, y'all. I do think that the lettuce is crucial, in my opinion, because it just, it makes it like, instead of like, you know how you eat like buffalo chicken dip with chips? Uh-huh. This makes it like a whole meal. Yes, like it is, yes. It is good. Oh my gosh, man, if you put some bacon on there. Ooh, wee. Okay, I have to tell you one more thing that I feel like is so crucial for me to say. Now, this is not like buffalo chicken dip, you know, I guess you can call it that or whatever, but it's really just like buffalo chicken, right, in the crock pot. Yeah. But what I feel like made this so incredible and what makes it better than any other time I've ever made buffalo chicken dip is because it's such simple ingredients. There's not the extra cream cheese, sour cream, cheddar cheese, you know, all the things that you put in buffalo chicken dip that can yeah. almost become just like a blob of... I feel like cream cheese is a good way to ruin buffalo chicken dip. Yep, yeah, probably. I'm pretty sure I put it in mine a lot of times. But I'm just saying, it's because of the simplicity, you can taste every single element of the dish. Right, like there was, like you could like really taste the um, the chicken itself. Like yes. you could still taste the chicken. And it had just the right amount of heat, it just the right amount of creaminess. Yeah, like, it, wasn't, it wasn't like overly hot or anything. It was, it was perfection. It was just deflate, like flavor. Yes. Flavor. 100,000 million percent you are going to love this recipe, okay? I concur. Yes. I second that opinion. Yes, okay. We gotta get the cookies out of the fridge and then go ahead and start oh. assembling so we can get these in the oven. Wow, and what better dessert to have than the cooling- Bucky, I'm telling you. The nice cooling element of an Oreo cheesecake this, cookie. This is like the best day of eating ever. True that. I mean, this is like my favorite meal of all time. Popping in here to say a huge thank you to Walmart for sponsoring today's video. I am so excited to show y'all our recent purchases. We actually got both of these for the camper, but decided to try out our new air mattress for a fun at-home date night. We made a little pallet in the living room and got some sweets and watched a movie. It was so much fun. We will definitely be doing this again. Daisy May loved it as well. She was in charge while we got everything set up. We wanted to find an affordable air mattress for whenever my parents or friends come to stay with us in the camper. That way they have something more comfortable to sleep on and I love this Intex Queen 24 inch Durabeam Dream Lux pillow top air bed mattress. Say that fast 10 times. <laughs> it comes with a carry bag so it's great for storage or for transport. It is so comfortable. I did not even want to go upstairs to our bed. I could have slept on it all night long. We love this air mattress and I will have it linked down below. We also wanted a small affordable TV for the camper for outside. We love the idea of being able to like build a fire and grill out and watch sports events or Wheel of Fortune because that's our favorite and we see so many people on their campsites with TVs and we're like that is the life whenever you're just like 
at your campsite relaxing. So we have been on the hunt for one. So this Hisense 32 inch HD Roku Smart TV was the perfect size and we found it on rollback. Y'all know Walmart is our destination for all things home and life. And if you Walmart, you know that rollbacks are often even lower prices on all of your favorites. So you can shop for everything you want and need while keeping your budget on track. So be sure you head down to my description box, shop all of these products and more. Everything will be linked down below for you guys. Okay, so see how these are like kind of large and tall? The recipe does say to just take your fingers and kind of press these down in the center and that way they just cook more evenly. And then that's it. These are going in the oven at 350 for about 12 to 14 minutes. Okay, cookies are out of the oven and they smell amazing. We're gonna let these cool for just a couple of minutes because I feel like they need to kind of like sit up and then we will dive into these. We're both just like staring. Yeah. We're look, like, what are they gonna be done? Look at the nice little uh, edge we got down there. I know, they all have that little edge. I cannot wait. Okay, the time has come. Bunky even got us a glass of milk. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which one are you choosing? Well, I just gotta say first. Uh huh. If this does not scream Oreo, I know. I mean, just look at it. I know. This is like, oh, look at the bottom. Oh, I haven't looked at the bottom oh, yet. Oh my gosh. Let me hang on. Cheers. Go, ma'am. That is wild. That's wild. The bottom here, like it still has like that classic cookie flavor, like you would think of with like a chocolate chip cookie. Yeah. But then. The center is like so chewy and creamy. Mm. Oh, look at that. Let me see. You get like the Oreo. Hang on, hold it there. Oh yeah. Wow. Great texture. I, I love the texture of them. I feel like it's such like a well, the cookie is like cooked perfectly. These are some of the best cookies we've ever made. Yes, I agree. Texturally. Flavorfully, exceptionally. They're so good and they were very easy to make. Mm hmm. And they're not overly sweet either. Oh, I, that's why I love about them even more. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Very smooth. Mm hmm. These are good. Mm hmm. We got two wins today. We did. Excel excellent food. We still have one more recipe. Mm. Oh my gosh, and I'm very much looking forward to that one too. Mm -hmm. Okay, I need some milk. Okay, now before we get started on this next recipe, I have to tell y'all, Bucky and I took those Oreo cookies home this weekend, and my mom, who like isn't a big sweets person, said they were the best cookies she's ever had. My sister, who is like an excellent baker, she always bakes the best goodies. She said they were some of the best cookies she's ever had. My dad loved them. We ate all of them. They were the best ever. I'm probably gonna make another batch like today or tomorrow. Please do. They, they went They went quick. They I, went too quick. Yes, I'm telling y'all, they were truly some of the best cookies ever. So like definitely make that recipe, but we are gonna get started on our third five ingredient recipe and we're gonna make beef enchiladas with only five ingredients. So here is what you need to make them. Of course, some tortillas, some hamburger meat, Mexican style cheese, a jar of chunky salsa is what the recipe calls for. And then of course, a can of red enchilada sauce. We're gonna go ahead and get this ground beef cooking and then drain off the grease, add in our salsa. Bunky's all excited because we have a fresh grease jar. <laughs> is there anything better? No, this is actually, I, I get too excited over this. <laughs> okay, so now you're just gonna add in one cup of chunky salsa, and we have just about like one cup left in this jar, so we're just tossing it all in. And then you're just gonna wanna like stir that around and get that salsa nice and warm. Now we have to heat up our tortillas, and since we don't have a microwave, I'm thinking we're just gonna heat them up on the stovetop like we normally do. It's just gonna That'd take a good. hot minute because like we're gonna do each one individually. Well, it only takes like 10 seconds or so for each one, but I, I feel like the, the stovetop method gives them a nice 
exterior, you know? Yeah, almost like a little... A little char. Yeah, Bumpy loves the charred bits on the tortilla. Mm -hmm. I like to wait until I start to see a little bit of smoke, <laughs> it, and, and then I turn it. When you start smelling it catch on fire. Yeah, when you, when you see a little bit of that, see like right here? Uh-huh. That's how you know you're getting it good. Those are Bumpy's favorite little parts on there. I could do without them. Oh, we probably should take that off. Okay, so now that we got our tortillas all nice and toasty, we're just gonna add a little bit of our ground beef mixture to each one and then roll it up and put it in our baking dish. I mean, you can kind of like pile these as much as you want or as little as you want. I'm a fan of don't overfill. Don't overfill, okay. Cause then it's gonna start coming out the sides on you. Just a little. One more, yeah, there you go. Okay, that's perfection. Tuck and roll. That was a good method. And then you roll all the way through and then you place seam side down. That was a great method. In your dish. And then for the best part, cover that bad boy with as much cheese as you want. It. I say at least half the bag. Half the bag. I'm going with like three fourths. One more for good measure. And a little bit more. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Don't you do it. I have to. Oh. I thought you were putting more cheese oh, on Oh, no, 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 no. I just give my girl a bite. Oh, that's a good girl. I would say officially we only use half, half the a bag. bag. <laughs> okay, we gotta get I'm some- I'm doing cleanup over here. We gotta get some aluminum foil out. We're gonna cover this really tightly and then bake it for like 30 to 35 minutes at 350. I just reread this recipe and apparently you are supposed to put a little bit of cheese inside the tortilla with the meat mixture, but I did not read that correctly at first. But I think seeing as how much cheese we put on top of there, it's gonna be plenty cheesy. Like we're not skipping out at all. No. It's gonna be fine. I also feel like when you get like a beef enchilada from a rest, you know, like a restaurant. Yeah. There's not cheese in that mixture. That's true. So I don't feel like there is either. Yeah, it's just usually on top. Yes. Okay, I gotta tell you guys something too. Last night, Bunky and I went to have dinner with our friends, and every time we go to their house, they like pull out all the stops and just make us the most gourmet, amazing dinner. And our friend Brittany made like homemade pasta to make homemade ravioli. They were so good. Mm -hmm. And this like gorgonzola cream sauce. And then we had like a beautiful steak. She made homemade focaccia bread. Like, it was just so good and it has gotten me like so inspired to get in the kitchen more and to like create more really cool things and like to further my kitchen skills so if you guys make like your own breads and pastas and things tell me like what all i need if you love it tips and tricks all the things because i want to know oh. yes Tell everybody what was in the gorgonzola cream sauce that you didn't know. Y'all, I did know. Oh, you did know. You're right. Yes. Okay, so I saw her. I watched her make this gorgonzola cream sauce, and she chopped up an entire shallot, shallot and put it in there, and I still ate the entire thing. I could not taste it. Right. I never saw any. Yeah. Because I was thinking, like, I'll be able to, like, kind of pick through the shallots. Nope. I never tasted or saw one of them, and it was so good, and I was so proud of myself. <laughs> So I hope y'all are proud of me too. It's like they almost just like- They dissolved. Dissolved into the sauce. And it, it was, was so good. It was delicious. Yeah. Okay, we decided that we were gonna take the temple off at some point. <laughs> so it's been in there for like 25 minutes and then Bunky just took that off and we're gonna pop it back in for like the remaining five to 10. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta take the foil off to get the rest of that cheese meltage cooked. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow, but let me just tell you that is looking good. Bunky, are you gonna sing your enchilada song for us again? <clears throat> no, but you can link the prior video for people oh, to see. Oh, Bunky, give us some enchilada. I, I don't remember the lyrics. They yes, you do. If you like enchilada. Why don't you sing it then? Nope. <laughs>
Okay, I gotta tell y'all something. Now, in my defense, we've had a very busy weekend and then we drove home four hours today, so we're a little bit tired. Yeah. But I was supposed to put enchilada sauce in the bottom of the dish. Yeah, that would have. I forgot, but it's okay. That may have helped, but. It would help it not stick as bad. Yeah, but these things are delicious. I think. What, what happens is like the, the tortilla, they kind of like absorb the enchilada sauce like while they're cooking and stuff, so they- Fluff they, up they almost? Just, yeah, they almost like fluff up. And then surprisingly, I was thinking that the, uh, the filling, the ground beef mixture, was not gonna have a lot of flavor. Yeah. But the salsa is an amazing shortcut. Yes. Because it's got the little bits of tomato and the, the peppers and the onion in there. And it really actually packs a punch. Yay! Yeah. These are really easy to make. Also, not missing the cheese on the inside. I think I think if the cheese was like in there with it. It'd be I, too much cheese. Yeah, like it would just, I don't know. I, I like it the way that we, that we made it. Like these are, these are really good. And one of my favorite parts is actually the little, um, like the ends that, that were a little bit exposed and then they got some of the cheese that kind of like crunched up a little bit. Mm. Okay, that was such a delicious five ingredient meal. Very easy. You gotta try that one. Bunky went back for seconds and he kept telling me, This is so good. I can't get over it. This is so good. So, y'all gotta try it. I'll leave all the recipes linked down below. So, I love you guys. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Give this one a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.